Greetings from the fishing village of Seaton Sluice in Northumberland, England. We're going to learn an English jig, not from Northumberland, but from North Yorkshire. The summer dance, this being July, it seems somewhat appropriate. It comes from the manuscript of Lawrence Ledley, a fiddle player from 19th century North Yorkshire, the village of Helperby. It's a cracking tune, lovely, bouncy, bright, happy tune. It goes a bit like this. Two and a three. Grand. We're in G major, one sharp, and it's an English jig, so the basic idea of the bowing is tum ti tum ti tire ti tire ti tire ti tum ti rum ti tum ti. And to give you a quick crash course on that, let's just get the feel of the bow on an open string. Tum ti tum ti. It's a great rhythm for skipping. The little bow gives the push for the skip, the long bow is the foot going down. Humpty Tumpty. And we can put that into running notes as well, so we go up a scale, slurring two, note, two notes and separating one. From an open string, just that. Two and a three. Let's start with open strings and hours of endless fun. Let's go up a scale. Tire pa tire pa tire pa pompa comes back to an open A. Let's try that. Starts on the D. And. And. Now you can imagine that if you only ever do tom ti tom ti, it can end up feeling like being hit over the head with a musical mallet. So bad it affected the camera. So. Every now and again, it's nice to break up the pattern and wear better than in avoiding slurring across two strings. So there, I might do one separate and two slurred. Let's try that. Two and. Two and. get a bit of syncopation in there as well. Sometimes we might have separate bows, but I'll still give a little push on that backbeat to help the skip. Just try that with me. Tupata, tupata. One, two.
basis of it. So here's the A part. Here's the A part with just the melody and the bowing. And I'll do it nice and steady. I'll do it twice. And look out for the structure, uh, which is question and answer. And also look out for the bowing patterns. Here it comes. Two and a three. If you want to go over that, just rewind and ghost along with it. But for now, I'm going to break it down phrase by phrase and we'll learn the bowing and the tune. So, first of all, why the count two and a three? It is because the tune starts with an anacrusis, leading notes, and a big one, three leading notes. It's not one, two, tuppity tum, ti tuppity tum. It's one, two, three. Three, tuppity tum, ti uppity ta tum. Okay, and that starts on an open D and it scales up to G like we did in the exercise. So, try me that. Two and a three. Two and a three. And then it continues in the same fashion on the A string, but look out for your C naturals, low second fingers. And we come up to the D, just a single note. Two, three. Two, three. And it comes from that D down a triad of G, D, B, G. Two and a three. You don't have to three that one. That's on. That's on the beat. One, two. From the open A. Two and a three. Two and a three. A little steadier. The whole of the first phrase starts with the open D. Two and a three. Two and a three. There it is, the key phrase, and that's half of the A part learnt already. The first answer starts on an open E. Have a listen to the first answer in its entirety. And. There's a bit more leaping around in this one and we get to break up the bowing pattern. So, starts on an E, we'll break it up. Starts on an E, goes down to the D. And. And. And then from there we go back onto the E string, not slurring across it, but separate bows and then slur F sharp to G. Try that. And. And. And then we jump a whole sixth away. A big interval, but the fingers are very close together. The first finger and the second finger. Second finger's just played a G on the E string. The first finger goes right next to it, B natural on the A string. And, and, great. From that B, we come slurring up to a C and down to an A. And then down to the G, and we come G, F sharp, down to the D. Two 
two and two and a three. Let's put the whole of that together. The first answer starts on an E, two and a three. Two and a three. Let us play the key phrase and its answer. And then because it's exactly the same, we'll do the next key phrase as well. Two and a three. is optional. Just remembering where the phrase finishes would be a good thing. Let's finish it off. The good news is, is that the second answer is very similar to the first. It just resolves. Instead of just stop on the G. Start on the E and Noticed, I'll finish with a down bow. Now I've got alternatives here. I could separate bows, absolutely fine. But the first time around, I started with a slur. I want to keep the same bowing pattern, so I'm going to sneak in an extra note. It keeps the groove going. Okay, and it also keeps my bone pattern the same both times. But when I come around it the second time, I'm just going to finish with the long bow. Two and a three. the A part. And the good news is that's half of the B part as well. Here's the B part. Two and a three. So, the first half of the B part starts with an up bow, goes up a scale from G to C, and, and, and then the second half of it also starts on a C, and it's the notes from the A minor triad, so C, E, and A at the top, but avoiding slowing across the string, so we break up the pattern again. Then back to the C and come down a three note scale. Okay, so this first phrase of the B part, it's all about the C. Try the whole phrase. And. finished on an A, we come up a three note scale, 
come back to the B. And then it's a sequence. From the B we go up a G. Triad, B, D, G. Back to the B. Down a three blind mice, three note descending scale. B, A, G. Okay, try that with me. From the B. And. Try it from the open A and the whole of the second phrase. And. And. And all we need is the anacrusis back to our familiar key phrase from the A part and it's a triad of D starting on an open A separate because I'm changing strings, F sharp and D. And then it's hauntingly familiar. So I'm going to play the B part just up to there, halfway through the key phrase. At the end of the key phrase. It starts on a G on an up bow. Two and a three. Great, and it finishes, um, as you'd expect, coming down, long note, back to the B part. But to get back to the A part, we sneak in that extra, um, extra bow again. Okay, so let us try the whole of the B part going back around to the A part. Two starts on a G on an up bow. Two and a three. it goes. So let's put some ornamentation and lazy bows in this. On the first phrase, on the key phrase, we're going to come up to the G and then give a lower mordant. So we'll play the F sharp again, play it again and hammer on the G, leaving it down. And it continues on with a bit of lazy bow. So we get a little moment of discord and tension because this tune is mostly very, very bright and happy. Try that. And. And. And then in the first answer, try anchoring that D while you play the F sharp and the G. And. 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 screen back. Then we've got the key phrase again. 
And the same thing here. Let's try the whole of the A part with those lower mordants and lazy bows. Two and a three. part we anchor that G up the scale to the C and if we want we can even put a lower mordant on that C like that two and a three two and a three hold of the phrase two and a three And then in the second phrase, we're going to create a little um, harmonic accompaniment. We're going to give the sense of a D fret, uh, chord going to a G chord. So over the under the A, we're going to ring an open D. And then I've just gone up the scale. Open string, first finger, second finger. My first finger is there waiting to play. I shall concentrate on putting my third finger on the G on the D string, playing a G, as I lift up my second, and I've got a nice little G B chord of G major. So we get try that with me. And And then to get into the key phrase um, from the A part, we've got the descending triad of D. I could be lazy with the bow there as well. And icing on the cake, what I call a bow pluck, when I play the G, I'm gonna just catch the open G. And that sets up a nice little drone. Let's try the whole of the B part. Two and a three. So I'm going to finish up with once through the tune at a steady tempo with all those bits in. Try it with me. One, two, three. it is. If it's now familiar, you can go back to the beginning and play it at full tempo 
uh, with the playthrough twice at the start there. And if you've enjoyed this tune and learning this tune in this way, I look forward to your company as we acquire some other tunes in other videos. Thanks for being here this time. Bye for now.